Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how the new extractor brushes work in ZBrush 2020. Before that though, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell to stay up to date on all our new videos. The extractor brushes in ZBrush is really one of my favorite features of 2020. And it's one of these, in every single version, there is one thing you're just going to be using all the time. And this is the one for me. So in short, what it allows you to do is it allows you to extract the sculpt the details so that you can reuse it other areas like on this character here you can see that we have a lot of of this like mid frequency and really high frequency and you have areas we don't have any of that so what we can do we can extract all the fine frequency here we can reuse it in other areas it also means that instead of sp doing bespoke uh, sculpting brushes you can, or skin brushes you can sculpt it in one area and then you can just ext just plaster them on to all the other areas and then create new extractor brushes and alphas from those areas yeah the same thing if you use something like the flip normal skin kit for example and you plaster some of those alphas all over the mesh you know now all of a sudden that's been combined using the extractor brushes on top of that you would all of a sudden get like a completely new third alpha that you could use yeah that's essentially what we're going to be doing in this video so the magic of the extractor brushes really doesn't really happen in the extractor brushes paradoxically they all happen under alpha and there is a new feature here called from brush and you can see here if you see oh look over here you see we have a little hotkey for it with the hotkey hotkey is g so essentially what happens now is that we have this new feature which allows you to extract details from your model and this works with i think all brushes in zbrush there might be some exceptions but at least it works with the standard brushes and the one brush i've been the brush brushes i've been trying with so how this works is that if you are using any brush here, let's set, have the standard brush and set this to drag rect. We can now hit the G key. Let's find an area here which has some fun details. Like uh, this area down here is really good. It has a lot of this like really nice pimples. Now we can hit the G key. And now you see it turns cyan. And now we can drag it out. And now it's going to just extract it. And now you can see the alpha we get over here. This is awesome because now we can keep just plastering this detail we just have on top of the other areas as well. So the only thing it's doing is just extracting as alpha. There is no magic here. It extracts as 128 um, by 128 16-bit map. And now you can just use this on top of this. You can also set it to uh, to spray. You can spray it around. You can change the size of it. And you can very quickly just... just just cover a whole area like this. So once it's been converted into an alpha, it's just like anything else regular in ZBrush. You know, you can adjust your Z intensity, you can modify the alpha, put a radial fade on it, um, maximize it so like the, um, the depths are, are better uh, used. So, you know, it's just like, it works like any other alpha in ZBrush after it's been extracted. You can see this if we were to set the focal shift to minus 100. What you can see now is it's, it's not going to soften it off in any way. Now you see we have the full image just projected onto it, which can be really nice in some cases. For instance, for the skin kit we made, uh, we, we designed them to work with minus 100, so they just blend into each other. But for a lot of cases, you want to set this to something like zero, which just really just softens off the edges and gives, gives it a really lovely, lovely result. But since this is an actual extractor brush video, let's check out the actual extractor brushes. So if you hit the B key or you go up here to brush, you can see we have three brushes down here. Let's look at the first one now, just called extractor. So this one is um, based on just sculpting on top of it. It's using the, 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 the dots stroke and it just means we can capture an actual stroke like this. So here we have a little scar because all our characters need scars. Uh, hit the G key. And now you can just drag on top of it. And now you can see it captures this entire length of the scar. And there we go. Now you can see it is captured. It might take, it might take some time. Uh, in our case, we have 11 million polys. So <laughs> it's quite a hefty one. And now if we were to sculpt, you can see what happens. Now it just drags out the scar like so. So it's a really cool way of doing it. Uh, it again, it might look a bit like magic to you. But this is really just an alpha, which is, uh, which is uh, predominantly a vertical alpha. So super cool stuff. You sculpt one area and now you can just really just get in here and just mess it up. This will just speed up your sculpting so much. Yeah, sculpt one scar and now you have 10. I think this is achievable with default ZBrush tools as well, where you have an alpha like this, but it's a custom made alpha. And then in your brush settings, you just sort of set it to roll off. So like it's, con it's a constant flow instead of just dragging something out. 
But with this new extractor brush, it just makes that process, you know, it's a one-click solution. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of these kind of things you could do before as well. Like we also made the skin kit before this existed and the, and they produce just as high quality alphas. It's just that this just, yeah, like you said, it's a one-click solution for it. So now you can really just scar him up. And then you could, could of course, save these brushes and... Uh, and you could make new brushes with these. You could save all the alphas and you can make like an extractor brush kit, whatever it might be. We also, let's just undo all that's actually, of this. Uh, that's a great idea. We should uh, flip normal <laughs> extractor kit brushes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea at all. Let's just undo this. I love this feature in ZBrush where you can just go back in history, like actually go all the way back. So here we have another area as well where we, um, we have some, um, they're not like pimples, but they're, they're like little... Fatty little pads. Tumors or something. Little tumors. So now we can use the extract brush, drag rect. And we hit the G key now. And now we can just drag it out like so. And now you can see it also, it, it, it puts them over here as well. Now this is exactly the same as what we just did with the standard brush. Like there is no difference between this whatsoever, as far as I can tell at least. I think it's just like, it, now you just have a contained within this extractor brush. You know, you don't need to apply the alpha to any other brushes. Yeah, exactly. As far as we understand. And also the fact that uh, it, it's not going to screw up any settings you have in a standard yeah, yeah. brush. Now we can go into the standard brush. Let's say we didn't have an alpha. Well, now we can just keep using, you can keep using these two together. So really useful stuff. So the extractor brushes are, they will just speed up your work significantly. I, I can't express how useful they are because it, it allows you to sculpt something once and then just keep reusing that. Now that said, it's not going to be used for, it's not like a VDM replacement or anything like that. It's It really is for like the high frequency or for general sculpted data like this. It's not going to be for like an ear or something like that. You can't really extract like the, you can't really extract it out like a VDM like that. Like where it might be useful, let's say you've done an area of really fine pore details on the face, and you could use the extractor brushes to grab some of those pores, some of the super fine detail. Yeah, so let's show what Morton was just talking about now. Like here you can see now we have an area here with basically no wrinkles or pores or anything like that. And now we can just go over this and do this. So it just means you can you can work up your sculpt in a completely different way. And then again there, maybe you want to use like to really capture the intensity of what you had before, make like a mix of the focal shift down up with the Z intensity, add some radial blur or radial fade to it in the alpha settings to sort of better mimic exactly what you just captured. And they're also all stored here as well. So if you want to have, if you want to capture the first one, we uh, want to use the first one we did. Now we can go in here and now we can just get this out. And you can see now we get this uh, combined result of it. And this area here is now almost solved. Uh, it just speeds it up so much. Other things we can do as well, instead of doing the really high frequency, we can do something which is more mid-frequency like this. If we can use the extractor drag rect, we can um, use an area like this, which uh, has a lot of, uh, maybe this is better, it has a lot of curvature to it. So we can hit the G key, and now we can use the extractor brush. One one little caveat of the extractor brushes or the from mesh feature is that it's a bit broken sometimes. We um, like it's actually this is a good result here. Actually, this is what we're seeing now. Uh, in this case here, this is not the correct result. And whenever I've been getting this, restarting ZBrush works really well. So I don't have a fix for this within ZBrush. It just seems like the feature is a bit broken. You can see here this feature here or this area here should work perfectly fine. There's nothing fundamentally different between these two areas. I've tested it on areas which are they're perfectly they're perfectly flat as well, and it just produces junk data. Uh, there's also an issue as well where it doesn't always work on the different brushes. It really should work with the standard brush every single time, but for some reason it doesn't always actually work. So just be aware that there are some, there are still some rough edges when the with the from from mesh alpha over the from the from feature, which just has to be ironed out. But in general, it works really well. And worst case, you just have to restart ZBrush. In general, I think. It is really going to speed up your workflow a lot, especially in the later detailing stages where you don't have to worry about applying individual alphas, trying to find alphas or buy new alphas. If you've sculpted up one area with maybe even some free alphas, then you can very easily make your own just with the extractor brushes. So yeah, the, that that's um, that's how you use the, um, the extractor brushes and the new from brush alpha as well, or from brush feature, which you just hit the G key to use and 
drag out where you want to be, change the, um, the stroke type to something which fits your needs, and works with nearly all brushes and ZBrush as far as we can tell. And if there are any problems, just remember, restart ZBrush. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you want to see more ZBrush 2020 tutorials or ZBrush tutorials in general in the comments. If you have any favorite ZBrush features, we'd love to hear about that. And we can, we can potentially make videos on issues you have in ZBrush as well. So yeah, make sure to leave a leave a comment, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.